greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three years, turning our Bibles to Psalm 146. And uh, in the Psalm, uh, the Psalmist is talking about relying on the Lord and not relying on anything else. First verse he says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. And uh, second verse he says, All my life I will sing of the Lord as long as I live. So this is his theme, not just for a moment or not just for a time or for achieving something, but this is something that he wants to do all his life. This is very, very crucial and very, very important in the life of somebody who really walks with the Lord. Now, when we follow the Lord, it should not be a momentary decision. It should not just be a decision in order to get something done. We don't come to the Lord and be extra faithful, extra prayerful, extra dependent, just to get something done or to meet some dream of ours or get some blessing. But actually, it is a lifelong relationship that the Lord really wants from each one of us. And uh, uh, many times uh, people misunderstand salvation as a one-time decision just to come to the Lord and uh, get something from the Lord and then just leave. No, that's not, that's not Christian life. Christian life is the moment you come to the cross and you know him as your personal savior, it means that you will continue to remain in, in complete communion with him on dependence uh, on him and uh, completely leaning upon him. Because when we don't depend on God, if, if our decisions are only um, momentary decisions or to receive something that we desire, then that's a commercial faith and that is not going to really give us a mileage um, that that will stay for this earth and also for eternity. And uh, in verse 3, he says, Do not put your trust in uh, uh, princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. And on that day, uh, very day, their plans come to nothing. So here, the psalmist is very clear. He says, don't depend on man because um, he's giving a very strong reason. Uh, and this reason is applicable to anybody whom we can depend he can be the strongest he can be the richest he can be the nearest or the dearest uh, the bible says their spirits uh, uh, depart and they fall to the ground and on that day all their plans will come to the nothing the greatest plans the greatest people and the richest people can have uh, will come to nothing the day they die. And this is what we see throughout in scripture in Isaiah chapter 30 verses 1 to 5. Uh, the Lord is telling obstinate children, uh, you carry out your own plans and you are forming an alliance with Egypt uh, without consulting me. Um, you, you went to look forward for Pharaoh's protection, but Pharaoh's protection uh, will be put to your shame. Egypt's shade will bring you disgrace. That's what Isaiah chapter 31 to 5 says. So the dependent upon Egypt in the past and Egypt only put them to shame because Egypt was led by Pharaoh who had breath in his nostrils and when Moses was going to Pharaoh Moses asked the Lord Lord if people will ask me who sent you then what should be my answer the Lord gave him a very specific and a very very clear answer when he said tell them that I am has sent you. No, I am who I am. That word means I don't depend on breath. I don't depend on anything. Tell, uh, tell the people of Israel and also tell Egypt that their dependence is maybe on Pharaoh, but Pharaoh depends on air to breathe, water to drink, food to eat, earth to uh, sustain. But the God who is sending you doesn't need any of these for sustenance. And uh, um, it, it was true that all the Egyptians who believed Pharaoh just came to dust because they believed a man uh, whose plans will come to nothing when they die. It may be our plans or any other plans. The day death strikes, all these plans are going to um, become just, just fallen ground. Whereas when we come to the Lord, and the Lord does something, then that that will have no end because the Lord is an eternal God. And uh, we also see this in uh, Isaiah chapter 31 and verse 1 where it says, Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and who rely on horses, who trust in the multitude of their chariots and in the great strength of their horsemen, but do not look to the Holy One or seek help from the Lord. So these people are only looking towards Israel, uh, to, towards Egypt and towards chariots, towards horses, but they are not looking towards God for help. And these people are all going to be very 
pitiably destroyed or maybe never make this mistake and that's why the psalmist is writing uh, that this is past israel history um, that um, they depended on egypt on the strength of horses on chariots without depending on the lord and all of that came to uh, nothing um, and then uh, in verse 5 he says blessed are those whose help is the god of jacob whose hope is in the Lord their God. Now this God of Jacob is a beautiful phrase to show that this nation of Israel exists just because God made a covenant with Jacob. And uh, they have the life of Jacob before them and also the covenant that God made with Jacob. Both of these things are very crucial. The history of Jacob gives them uh, a, a great motivation to trust in the Lord because the Lord is somebody who brought Jacob out from every kind of situation and the Lord really protected them, really took them through. But then uh, the covenant that he made with Jacob, that he would bless them, he would give them all the lands that were around them and he would make them a nation. Um, this covenant was something that really sustains Israel even today. So that should be uh, their confidence. Uh, and then uh, from verse 6 onwards, he talks about uh, uh, the power of God, that he is the maker of heaven and earth and everything in it, he remains faithful forever. Now, this is very crucial that God is faithful forever. His faithfulness is our strength. His faithfulness is our energy and his faithfulness stands forever and forever. There is no end for his faithfulness. Even if uh, his faithfulness just ceases for a moment, we cease to exist. And that's why Lamentations is every morning his faithfulness is new Every morning it is being renewed. That means there is not a gap in his faithfulness. There is not a break in his faithfulness. He is forever faithful and that's our strength. Now, he, uh, from verse 7 onwards, we see uh, that these are unique characters that are written about the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, because uh, when, um, when the Lord Jesus Christ uh, explained his miracles, or explained his purpose, he very, very clearly uh, spoke about uh, things. And he said, from especially when we read Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 16 to 21, we see that the Lord read from Isaiah and he said, this has been fulfilled. That is, I have come to give uh, sight to the blind and uh, uh, freedom to the captive and uh, to proclaim the year of the Lord's Jubilee. So um, he came to fulfill scripture. So, uh, so the Lord was very clear to speak to people that he was the Messiah on whom they had to put their trust. And uh, we also see in Matthew chapter 11 verses 2 to 5, uh, he explained his miracles and he said, look at these miracles. Know that I am the Messiah. And uh, um, uh, he, he took from the Old Testament, especially these verses, verse 7 and 8. He took over these verses and he says that it was uh, he that the Old Testament pointed to. He was the uh, real Messiah for uh, whom the whole world was looking forward. And um, we, we only need to trust him. Now, uh, in verse 7 and 8, this is what the Lord is telling. Look towards me. Look towards me. And in the New Testament, Jesus says, look towards me. I am the God of the Old Testament. I have come as your Messiah. I have come as your Savior. And when we look to the Lord, the Lord will really take us through in every situation. So uh, we shouldn't turn our eyes to man or to any strong person or rich person or any person because finally with all the strength they have they are mortal beings they are not immortal and the day and the day they die their plans will just get into the dust and they have no strength to act upon anything the moment they uh, get into the grave so we should be able to follow logically and sensibly a god who is beyond the grave who is beyond death who has conquered death and uh, who is immortal because his plans are immortal his strength is immortal his help is also immortal because he is immortal gracious heavenly father help us to always look upon you knowing that you are our strength you are our support you are our sufficiency and every other strength and every other hope that we have is just a faulty wall and a mirage and it will not fall. Please, O oh Lord, open our eyes to see you as our Messiah, as our Redeemer, as our Helper in everything. Jesus' wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.